Well, it's November 21st, 2015, and we're about four days into the uh, big windstorm here in Spokane that knocked out power to about 200,000 people. Um, that's the uh, biggest uh, power breakdown in the entire history of uh, Spokane, Washington. Um, so anyway, what I did was I was fortunate that I did have this generator on hand, and I had a bunch of uh, batteries and inverters and screw-in LED bulbs and everything. Uh, this house does have gas heat and um, so I have uh, plenty of hot water and I'll, I'll show the breaker room little deal that I did was yanking the uh, furnace power from the breaker box putting it to a cord uh, and I was running that on uh, batteries and an inverter uh, to get the house warmed up um, and the, the only reason I'm using a generator right now is because I just got some big batteries that need charging up. They're supposed to be charged up, but they're not. Uh, this kind of has a little interesting setup here. This is my uh, basically patented uh, plasma ignition system. This was an old test uh, generator. And um, it has a normal magneto uh, on the flywheel uh, for the ignition, which is what this would normally plug onto the, uh, uh, the spark plug in there but every time a big load kicked on like the refrigerator it pulls 800 watts instantly because it's a surge because it's not power factor corrected it needs a power factor cap on there to, to buffer that but um, then it settles down to about uh, 250 watts uh, the refrigerator and uh, it's at a 0 0.98 power factor which is uh, really really good but um, every time a load would kick on like that this generator would just um, die and I'd have to come restart it and I had to do that over and over and over and getting pretty annoying and uh, um, I have a 40 amp uh, battery charger in my breaker room charging this big battery bank from this uh, generator and um, so I got kind of annoyed with it and so I hooked the uh, plasma ignition system back up and it works flawlessly uh, I don't think I've ever really done a video showing the plasma ignition setup. I did show this at one of the uh, uh, energy conferences. And so basically what I have is a multiple discharge uh, MSD unit. This is Street Fire. This is their budget brand. And what it is is it's dropping a capacitor across the primary of an ignition coil um, instead of 12 volt battery. So it's, you know, a couple few hundred volts being discharged to the primary to the 12 volts. So it steps it up. But um, this capacitive discharge each time it's triggered it actually fires up to about six or seven times at super low RPM and the faster it goes it'll drop down to maybe you know two or three um, fires per ignition cycle now I have this powered basically by a, a battery down here this battery is is toast because um, I had some things powered from it that I left on and so this thing won't even start the engine so I got this little 35 amp hour battery. Um, <clears throat> this is an AMG deep cycle 12 volt 35 amp hour that I'm using for not only the starter but to power the um, the plasma ignition, which really doesn't take very much. And so this would be something you'd put like in a car to modify its ignition, just an off and on switch going to the battery power to power it. Uh, each time it's triggered, whenever this um, generator needs a spark to to uh, uh, get the combustion going on the uh, on the right cycle I have the cap going to the primary of this high performance ignition coil and then that ignition coil output is going to the spark plug but and, and that's a non-resistor spark plug no resistance in it and um, I have this magneto one going to a dummy plug just going to ground that's a little non-fowler there that's just so I don't damage the magneto uh, uh, coil okay so because you want to give it somewhere to fire or it'll short itself out okay so anyway I have this high voltage diode right here which means as the high voltage jumps across the spark plug um, that ionizes the gap so that the capacitor in here can discharge directly across the gap normally it takes about 5,000 volts to jump across a gap but if you um, pre-ionize the gap with a uh, high voltage you can get a couple hundred volts to jump a gap where normally it wouldn't and the effect of this is a negative resistance effect that accelerates the cap discharge and I get this huge plasma impulse uh, with crazy power that can literally um, uh, 
dissociate hydrogen from water just on on uh, contact and then it instantly ignites the hydrogen which would in turn um, ignite more of the fuel for more power less emissions more mileage on a car if you can get around the computer sabotage and whatever I'm just running gasoline here with a little additive in here called uh, RXP um, so I'm not modifying it with water or anything this is just to, to run it but anyway the way I have this timed is straight through the uh, generator I took out the cent center bolt and what I did was you can kind of see in there off of the little cowling little cover bolts um, I bolted this ABS uh, like four inch ABS plastic cover which would go on uh, like big plumbing pipes and stuff um, just the end cap and then on the inside uh, on that bolt I got a little plastic wheel with a little magnet on it so that's spinning you know uh, as that motor is turning um, this is a piece of four inch ABS that I sanded down a little bit to fit in here so I can turn it like this and I got a little uh, like a reed relay switch I'm just using it as a little reed switch to um, when the magnet comes past this reed it makes contact which turns this transistor on and what that does is that fires my CDI and that tells me when it when to fire it and so it's infinitely adjustable I can advance and retard it as much as I want and right now I got it timed just perfect for the uh, 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 the best RPM and even though it has a governor on it I can tell just by listening to it where the uh, where the timing needs to be um, but anyway this is how I have it have it timed and so um, that's the plasma ignition system on the generator and it works really good battery on I can just it helps if I turn the ignition on okay okay so that's running on the uh, plasma now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show what's going on in the boiler room and um, how I'm getting power to my heater and stuff like that so I'll just pause it here So I'm just inside my uh, boiler room right here. Uh, this is a gas-fired boiler. Um, and then got hot water because uh, I got gas. So I'm not like totally off the grid. Um, but with gas, it's got a little regular flame in there as a pilot light. So it doesn't need any electricity. You got all the hot water you need. This does need electricity for the pump, uh, igniter, the uh, damper valve in the uh, chimney and a few other little relays and uh, the thermostat controls and stuff like that valves and so over here's the breaker box and this was is from the furnace which was wired into here into this breaker so i disconnected it i wired it to a um extension cord and that extension cord is going to the generator but um, when i turn the generator off um, i have been powering it on this inverter connected to this battery bank this battery bank is sitting at 12.5. I've been charging it since this morning, and like I said, um, I have been using it. It'll drop it down to 10.5, and so uh, this right here is a battery charger where I got on 40 amps. So 40 times 12 is about 480 watts, which means at full dead, um, uh, for the rated amp hour, this is 450 amp hour, uh, 12 volts. Uh, series and paralleled and then I did the common bus down the middle to equalize the whole thing and that means that this would have to charge it for about 11 hours to get it full charged when I got it the battery store said that ah, it's all charged up and everything but they just see the 12 volt something and think it's charged but really it's not it needs to be pushed to 15.3 uh, volts which after I charge it with this I got a huge Bedini charger rejuvenator that um, I'll use to push it to that in, in the proper way let it off and it'll be fully uh, charged um, but anyway so that'll take a while to to charge these up and it'll last quite a while and then once it is charged up I can add some of my solar panels and inverter and stuff to it but when you got a 450 amp hour battery bank and you're charging it from dead um, you just need to kick some serious juice to get it up to full charge and so Anyway, what I basically r run on this uh, invert little cheap Harbor Freight inverter is the heater, which only draws up to 119 watts, which is not very much. 
and then I'll bring in the extension cord going upstairs to my refrigerator which draws 250 watts while it's running and then maybe about 50 other watts for miscellaneous laptop charging phone and a couple uh, 60 watt equivalent LED bulbs that only draw 9.5 uh, watts each so anyway this is my setup and how I'm getting through the um, uh, windstorm damage with uh, no electrical service and for the most part um, I've used this some but uh, I've mostly been using some 35 amp hour 12 volt uh, deep cycle batteries AMG deep cycles from Harbor Freight and what I was doing with those was um, basically smaller inverters with a little cord and a lamp to a uh, those LED bulbs and um, you know one of those can easily run uh, two of those you know pretty much non-stop for 20 hours at the rated uh, discharge for those things so anyway just glad that I you know knew what to do I would recommend don't do this unless you have a licensed electrician um, which they would probably mount this in a separate box and all that but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get eight more batteries like this and 2,500 watts of panels and a 160 amp 12 volt um, solar charge controller from uh, John Bedini through teslachargers.com. Uh, that's my company. And I'm going to mount a separate box here where the big battery bank will feed everything through an inverter into that breaker box. And so if power goes out, I just turn off the main line, the main line to disconnect this from the grid and then um, throw another switch which will take this power and pump it right into whatever breakers that I need. And I will be pretty much off the grid except the gas. Um, just a matter of getting a solar um, hot water heater um, to preheat the boiler water and this water so use you know bring the gas usage down to minimum to begin with. Then after that I can get an electrical powered um, heat pump hot water maker which will only draw about maybe 600 watts uh, which will be a heat pump hot water system the Stiebel Eltron um, model is a COP 2.4 which means it'll produce 240 percent the amount of hot water for the same amount of electricity compared to a, uh, a heating element and so and same with the boiler eventually so little by little um, I'll be sitting here in the middle of the city um, with uh, this house uh, completely off the grid just a process but this windstorm has definitely given me the incentive to uh, speed it up a little bit faster than uh, I planned on so anyway I don't know if any of that is useful to anybody but this is what I'm doing and these T105 batteries you can get them for about 139 a piece they're six volts so you need to put two two in a row and there's benefits to having two six volt batteries instead of a single 12 volt because in a 12 volt battery You'll have cells in the middle go bad and so um, if you equalize the six volt cells so if you had a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt battery you're only connecting the outside pluses and outside negatives but you can't you can't do anything with the middle cells and they will go bad but if you have six volt cells and you connect down the middle what you're doing is you're equalizing the whole thing so it sees it as one big battery so to speak but what happens is you can equalize each set you have in series and the middle cells will not go bad. And just that alone will greatly extend the life of your battery. And of course, if you're charging it with the uh, Tesla chargers, uh, bat plug-in battery charger or solar charge controllers, then uh, the chemistry when you are using a battery, like the, the flooded, flooded cell lead acid batteries, is 100% um, reversible, which means that um, if you properly bring it to a full topping charge at the right voltage in the right way, each time you 100% reverse that chemistry which means you have a theoretical infinite amount of charge and discharge cycles in this batteries completely contrary to all the battery stuff out there that's claimed by the battery manufacturers and the charger companies and the solar industry and all that so you could actually have a solar battery backup system in your home where the batteries will last the life of your home there's no reason for them to go bad if you know how to charge them so they make it look like lead acids or an old obsolete technology, but they're, they're water fuel cells, literally. And it's basically a perfect battery. Um, it's just they never knew how to charge them properly. Well, some of them did, but they never really did that. Um, you know, the bottom line chemistry, uh, being a water uh, fuel cell, is that uh, when you're discharging it, when you're taking power out of it, what you're doing is you're creating water molecule. And when you um, 
charge it back up, you're destroying a water molecule. So you're either making or breaking a water molecule is the end result of the chemistry in a lead acid battery. And that's the bottom line. But anyway, um, hope everybody in Spokane is doing okay. Luckily, there's uh, everybody's helping each other out, and there's plenty of places to go where it's warm, and a lot of places do have power uh, to stay warm and get some food, and uh, there's a lot of wood stoves in this town too. So anyway, that's that. Okay, so a gas generator was running uh, pretty much all day today, and <clears throat> with this, uh, I had it on the 40 amp, which is about 480 watts going into it, which means it would take about 11 and a half hours from being totally dead to fully charged, um, and a 450 amp hour battery bank can actually take, can actually, well, it can deliver 800 something watts per hour for up to five hours, that's five hour discharge rating. Um, but in any case, it charged up all day. Uh, it's the most charged it's ever been, because like I said, the battery store, even though they say it's charged up, it really wasn't. Uh, voltage is not an indicator of if it's really charged or not. But anyway, <clears throat> it pushed it to about uh, the low 14 volt range. And since it is really charged, and I'm gonna use it tonight, which I am using it for uh, power my furnace. And um, this other cable is going to lights upstairs and refrigerator and everything and you see that the furnace is running and 12 volt battery bank is considered full charged when it's resting at 12.66 or 12.6 you got to bring it above that bring it down to that and this can be actually taken down to um, 10 and a half volts since it's a uh, deep cycle battery and so um, today was the first real charge it got um, so, since I'm going to be using it tonight, it'll be discharged some, but it's not going to go all the way down to 10.5 like it did yesterday or, you know, early this morning because I was starting off with batteries that were essentially not charged to begin with. And so, um, this is going to run all night long on this, uh, not going to have any problems, and at 12.65 volts, um, and when you, when you see it hold there for a little while, you know you're really getting into the capacity of the battery. And so, tomorrow morning, it's not going to be down to 10.5. Um, uh, I'd be surprised if it's even uh, below 12, actually. But in any case, um, tomorrow morning, that's the inverter kicking on the fan. Uh, so tomorrow morning, um, wherever it's at, uh, I'm going to put it on this until it pushes it all the way up into the uh, high 14s. Then what I'm going to do is put the uh, Bedini... Um, big industrial charger on it and let it go until it pushes it to 15.3 then it's received a full topping charge not that it's really desulfating anything because these batteries have not really been used um, but they've never been um, pushed all the way up to the top so we're going to do that and essentially the generator is just a substitute for the solar panels so we're just doing this test right now again I'm going to add eight more batteries and I'm going to have uh, about 20, I don't know, 2,500 watts of panels on the roof uh, for starters. And eventually I want uh, solar hot water collectors um, to preheat the uh, boiler water and the hot water. And eventually tw move towards uh, basically pulling everything off the grid. Or at least have a backup system where um, I have full access to pretty much everything that I always have. Uh, with my normal power draw without having to sacrifice anything. So this windstorm has kind of been a blessing to just get people moving in the right direction with this stuff.